Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today we are finally reviewing the Aurora Strug Collection from Colourpop Cosmetics. This launched ages ago. I received it in here a little while back and I'm just slowly catching up on all of my Colourpop reviews. This was one collection that I was seriously so excited for and you know Colourpop releases so much these days, we all know that and it's hard to be excited for like every single launch but genuinely the Aurora Strug Collection was one that I was so excited for and I was hoping that I was going to get in here. So with that being said, if you guys want to see swatches, comparisons, everything you need to know, maybe you probably already know everything about this collection because it's been out for a while. But if you would like to know my opinion on it, then please continue watching. So just like always, there will be timestamps on today's video. So if you want to skip to a certain product, to a certain look, you can go ahead and just run your mouse along the timeline and it'll take you to where you need to be. But we are going to go product by product. First things first, we have to talk about the palette, the Aurora Struck palette. I think the packaging is beautiful. It's simple, but it's beautiful. I absolutely love it. And you can kind of see the color story that we're going to get inside. So this is their mega palette with 30 shades. It ranges from mattes to shimmers. We even have some duo chromes in here as well. We got some glitter and this goes for 35 US dollars. And I genuinely love this color story so much. You guys know I'm not really... Well, actually, I was going to say that I'm not a cool tone girl, but I feel like these days I'm definitely leaning more towards cool tone makeup and colors. So when I first saw this palette, I just thought it was absolutely stunning. And I genuinely think that this is ColourPop's best mega palette and one of their best palettes in a long time. I have seen a few inconsistencies with their formula, especially when they have changed from the bigger pan to the small pans and I find with the bigger pans they are pressed in really hard which makes the formula a little bit harder to work with I mean it's still good but I love the original just the smaller original pan size the formula on this are very buttery and very very pigmented the metallics are shiny they're just stunning and this Oh, there's a lot of unique shades in here as well, which is hard to say with Colourpop palettes because they have so many shades now. How can you make something unique? But this palette, genuinely, I'm literally obsessed. So I love the way it's set out as well because if you look by column by column, you pretty much have like a five pan color story. So you can break it down like that. But then as a whole, like the palette as a whole, there's just so much you can do with it. You have your transitions, your mid-tones, you go very, very dark as well. And even the metallics, you get a range. I feel like with a lot of ColourPop mega palettes, because there's 30 shades, a lot of the shades, once it's on the eyes, they can overlap. But I feel like in this palette, there's not a lot of overlapping. Everything is so different and serves a purpose. And I really cannot rave about this palette enough. I think like I know we're only in January and I know that this released last year but for my end of year Colourpop palette ranking I don't know what's going to top this. I think this is going to be number one, if not top three. We're going to see what Colourpop has in store for us this year but for real like this Oh, it's everything. It's absolutely everything to me and I'm so in love with this palette and I haven't felt this love for a Colourpop palette in a really really long time. And Next up in the collection, we have three light sticks and these go for 10 US dollars. They have a really pretty purple packaging and the three shades are called Sky Watcher, which is the green iridescent. And then we have Winter Nights, which is the lilac purple iridescent highlight. And then lastly, we have Light Chaser, which is the ultra violet blue highlight. And I will say that these are really pretty. I think these pair really nicely with 
the palette and they are more of a unique shade like you have the green the purple and the blue that's not really typical from Colourpop so I love to see that although I would have loved it if it was in a super shock formula because I don't think I have a super shock highlight in these type of shades and I really just don't care for the light sticks just because I'm not a fan of the formula I only use it on my nose for some reason on my nose it's okay but when I use it on my cheeks it does pick up product underneath it making it look quite patchy so I'm just not the biggest fan of the light sticks but I do think these shades are really nice so if you are a fan of the light sticks then I would recommend it but personally for me I don't recommend it and then next up we have their so dewy face gloss in the shade panoramic and this is 10 US dollars and apparently this is a comeback product and I'm thinking I've never seen this product before and I've been reviewing Colourpop since 2016 so I've been reviewing them for many many years I review so many of their collections and I've never seen this before or maybe I have and I just don't remember but like I I probably would know right maybe it was before I started reviewing Colourpop so I had no idea so it says they're bringing back their fan fave dewy face eye gloss with a first ever duo chrome finish so this is definitely giving like putty highlight and you can use it on your eyes as well I actually have not used this yet because I'm literally terrified of this product like I'm terrified of these really like jelly like products to put on my face because I just know it's going to pick up the product underneath so I haven't tried it yet I'm gonna try it after I finish filming everything for today and in case if it does ruin my makeup it's fine because I'm gonna take it off anyway so I will put that clip in here my little first impressions all right I'm done with filming today for some reason when I was applying the lip oils I got a little bit of a reaction on my lips hopefully that's just temporary but let's try the so dewy face gloss I'm so scared this is what it looks like it's very goopy I just I can only imagine this looking good on like your bare skin I wiped some on the back of my hand just to get like less product on I'm just gonna apply it like highlighter I guess wow this is interesting that's really pretty and it didn't pick up any of the products underneath okay it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be like that actually looks quite nice but as soon as I look straight there's a cast on my cheek even though they say it's a duochrome I'm not seeing the duochrome on my skin I'm just gonna go all in okay who cares this is this is it I'm taking my makeup off It just feels a little heavy though, like I don't know if I would want to go out with this on. Like it's just very sticky. I think this would be nice for like photo purposes, you know? Yeah guys, I'm not sure how I feel about this one. First impressions. But moving along, and next up we have some Luxe Lip Oils. These are also 10 US dollars each as well. And there are three shades. And the three shades are called Totally Magnetic, Under the Stars, and Lights Season. And these are really pretty too, but because they are lip oil, they are a very sheer finish. And although in the packaging you can see that one is a lilac, one is a blue, one is a clear, but once these are on the lips, they are all gonna look the same and I feel very repetitive saying this because I say this with all of Colourpop's glosses or lip oils or in general if any brand comes out with multiple lip glosses, lip oils if it is a sheer formula, it's going to look the same on the lips unless it's a very thick lip gloss or lip lacquer then it would look different but Overall, Colourpop glosses generally are a little bit more sheer and tinted. Alright, but lastly in the collection, we have one of their shimmering dry oils from Soul Body. This is in the shade Celestial Sunsets. Such a pretty name. This is also 10 US dollars as well. And it is a mini size. And this one is really pretty. So it looks quite pearly in the bottle, but there is a lot, a lot of lilac purple reflex. And you will see that when you 
you apply it to your skin and I feel like with the pearly base and the lilac reflect the lilac just like how I use my lavender powder is going to sort of color correct my really warm yellow undertone and it's really going to brighten up the skin so I actually really like this dry oil and I think the purple in it definitely will give you a brightening effect if you have a yellow undertone so I'm definitely keeping this I usually pass on my dry oils just because I don't need that many in my collection but this purple one I think I will get a lot of use out of it I mean maybe I won't uh, just because I don't really use dry oils a lot because I don't really show a lot of skin I don't really go out a lot to you know have a chance to use these but on the occasion that I do I definitely would go for this one I think it's really really pretty and I love the purple in it but essentially guys that is the entire collection if you wanted to purchase everything as a whole it is a 99 USD feel free to use my affiliate code Judy to save 10% off your order it can be on anything in this collection individually as a whole my code is there for you just know that I do earn a small commission if you do choose to shop with my code but thank you in advance if you do choose to do so. So with that being said, let's go ahead and move into my three looks. I hope you will enjoy. So for the first look here, we have a icy and muted blue eye look. I actually wanted to use more of the gray and taupey tones in the palette, but the look ended up being a little bit more blue than I was envisioning. But overall, I really do like how this look turned out. So with that being said, we're first going to go into this shade here called Bucket List. And this is going to be our base and transition shadow So I'm just gonna sweep that all over my lid first and then I'll slowly blend that up into my crease Bucket list is like a taupey gray. So I think it works perfect as a cool tone transition shadow and the shadow obviously does blend out super easily we're gonna take that same shadow and run that all over our lower lash line and i like to use a bigger brush on my lower lash so i really like to diffuse it just like all over here and it kind of works as like my shading for my egg yolk cell then we're gonna go into the shade geomagnetic and i'm gonna focus this at the outer corners of my eyes this shade is a mid-tone gray but that's what i mean i wanted like you know this look to be a little bit more gray and taupey but end up being a little bit more blue but i love how this look turned out I feel like it's a nice and muted colorful look but just really focusing geomagnetic at the outer edge here just to deepen out the eye then I'm gonna go into this shade here called Eye No Sphere and I'm also gonna focus this at my outer corners as well this is like a really deep navy blue like it almost looks black but it has like a navy undertone so we're just going to use this as our darkest shade just again to deepen out the outer edge I am switching my brush to an angled brush and I'm going to start defining my lower lash so I like to start at the center here really close and then slowly like drag it out Then we're gonna go into this shade here called Solar Vibes and this shade is so pretty it has a lot of little micro glitters in it which is not like a press glitter but it's just a little bit different from the usual metallics like this just has so much more sparkle the base is not as opaque but you still get that like lilac shift to it I think this is really pretty um, I think it's a little different from what we usually see from Colourpop but it doesn't apply like a glitter, you know? But we do see a lot of those micro glitters. Even though this shade is really pretty, you can see something is just missing, right? Like the inner corner highlight, it just brightens up the eye look. So with that being said, we're going into this shade over here called Head North. We're gonna use this as our inner corner highlight. It's like a satin metallic, so it's very reflective has an icy base but it reflects a little bit more blue and I'm gonna kind of drag this into my crease over here to really brighten up the eye you know and then we're gonna also take this onto my lower lash line as well so first at the inner third here and then I'm gonna drag that underneath that navy lash line 
for that egg yolk style look. And that is essentially it for eyeshadow. I'm gonna do my eyeliner and mascara off camera, but just one last finishing touch. I'm gonna take the Kaleidos Multi Chrome Eyeliner. This one is in the shade C Sparkle. We are gonna apply this on our lower lash line at the center here, just for a little sparkle. Then we're gonna go in with the light stick. This is the shade Light Chaser. It is the blue purpley reflecting one. So I'm only gonna use this on my nose. I only like this as my nose highlight. Whenever I apply it on my cheeks, it always looks patchy. So this is just gonna go on my nose. And then for lips, I'm gonna use the blue lip oil. This is called Lights Season. I did have a bit on when I first started my makeup, but I'm just gonna apply a bit more. So my lip color underneath is from Flower Nose, and it's very pinky, and I feel like when I add the blue on, it kind of gives more of a lilac color. But with that being said, this is the first look completed. It's giving snow bunny vibes. I absolutely love how icy but muted this eye look is. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this first look as well. All right, and then for the second look, we're gonna be playing with more of the purples. We're gonna be doing this really intense half cut crease, which I haven't done in a while. I'm also wearing false lashes, which I also haven't worn in a long time, so this look is very special. So we're first gonna go into this shade here called No Sleep, and this is going to be the base color for our look. So I'm just going to sweep that all over my lid, and then I'll slowly blend that up into my crease using windshield wiping motions. This does need a little bit of building up as it is like a really light pastel shade. And we're also going to run that all over our lower lash line as well. Then we're going to go into this shade here called Midnight Sun. And we are first going to focus this at the outer corners of our eyes. Now this is one of the darkest shadows in the palette. It's like a almost black purple plum. So just taking what's on the brush and just gonna focus it right at the outer corner first and then I'll slowly start doing my blending. And then I do like to take it into my inner crease ever so slightly because as you can tell, we are gonna be doing a half cut crease which I haven't done in so long, but it feels so good to do one again. Then I'm also gonna take that onto my lower lash line as well. Again, I always like to start in the middle and create a straighter lower lash. This will have eyeliner on top of it, so it really is just working as a guideline and as a base. Now I'm just taking some of my Ace Beauty Eye Primer. It's really similar to the P. Louise Eye Base. Um, it's just like a thicker consistency. You could use your concealer for this. It will work just as fine, but we are gonna start carving out our half cut crease. So I like to focus the product mostly on my lid first at the inner third. And you wanna make sure you go past your crease line because when you open up your eyes you want to still see the half cut crease and you also don't want transfer if you do have a similar eye shape to mine. I like to go in with a skinnier brush. We're going to drag that along our crease line to really sharpen things out. So I'm actually going to go in with a little lip brush with Midnight Sun, which is that dark purple. And I'm just going to hold it upside down. And that tip of the brush is going to drag along that line of the cut crease. Then going into this shade here called Comet Seeking. This is gonna go right at the center of our eyes. This is a really pretty shadow actually. I would say it's like a duochrome, but the flip isn't too intense, but you can see purple and pinks in here. Then going into this shade here called Bore Alice. This one is a really strong duochrome. Has like very peri purple blue vibes to it. Really meshing that in together it just gives more dimension to our eye look. That's also gonna go into our inner corners. That's gonna go onto our lower lash line here. 
And I'm doing that same technique again. So in the inner corner, and then it's gonna go underneath that definition to highlight our egg yolk style. And just to enhance the egg yolk style, I'm gonna go into Geomagnetic. Tight lining the upper lash line and also the lower lash line. I am going in with the black eyeshadow in the palette called Dude Self. And I'm just gonna use this to create my wing. Alright, moving on to the nose highlight using the light stick. This is the shade Winter Night. This has more of like a purple iridescent, which is going to match this look perfectly because we are all all purple today. And then for lips, I'm wearing Strawberry Moon from Flower Nose. I think it's the same from look one. For the lip oil, I'm going in with this shade called Under the Stars. And I think because my lip is a pinky color, it just kind of looks like a clear type of gloss on top. But here is the second look completed, the all purple half cut crease look. I love how this turned out. Like I said, it's been a while since I've done a half cut crease. So I really enjoyed filming this little look today. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. I got the lashes on, everything. The full monochromatic purple glam. And here we have the last and final look. We are ending it off with a bang. I'm calling this the Aurora Lights look for the Aurora Struck palette. This look is inspired by Jessica Vu. And I actually did recreate this almost two years ago, but I did it in green. And I thought I would recreate it for this final look just cause it was giving a lot of Aurora vibes, you know, Aurora Lights. So on one eye, as you can see here, I just did a really standard blue look. It's very similar to the first look but I just used a few different shades but essentially it's just like my standard go-to because we're going to be focusing on this side. Um, this is where all of the Aurora lights is going to be. So I'm going like free-handed. Usually I like to do one eye off camera so I know what I'm doing on this eye but I'm going like based off nothing just based off my reference photos. So first I'm going to take the shade No Sleep. I want a lot of this in the upper crease region. Everything about this is flowy, but also defined at the same time. So making sure we are getting just a good base down. I'm also gonna bring it around here, sweeping it like around my brow. Then I'm just taking some of my Ace Beauty eye primer, which is sort of like the P. Louise eye base, same thing that we used in the second look. Um, I'm going to start just cutting out my crease here. And the nice thing about this look is that because we are only doing one eye, I don't have to worry about my creases being even. But it is going to be a full cut crease, so we are going to apply this all over the eyes. And then sort of around here, we're going to flow it around. Now we're gonna go into the shade down here called Midnight Sun. And I'm just gonna use the most tiniest amount on my brush. I'm gonna like wipe it on the back of my hand. We're just gonna define that crease a little bit now that we have our map out. So I am going in with No Sleep, the lilac shade that we use on a pencil brush just to diffuse that out a little bit more. Then going into this shade here called Journey. This is the shade that I use on my other eye. I'm gonna focus this on the other side. Then going into this shade here called Feeling Wavy. I also use this on my other eye as well. And this is going right on our lids. I'm gonna bring it up right into that crease to really carve it out. Then we're gonna go into Head North. And this is going to be my inner corner highlight. This is such a beautiful stark white, but it has a little icy blue reflect to it, which is perfect. I'm also going to drag it along my crease line as well. Then we are going to put this against the contrasting blue. And might as well put this on our brow bone as well. I have not done a brow bone highlight in a very long time. 
So going into the shade Arctic Fox, I'm applying this on my brow bone on top of that silvery white. I placed it on the center of my lid and over here as well and in here. Just because I felt like it was looking too monochrome and needed some contrast. And honestly, the metallics in here, guys, are so pretty. Like this green, oh, I haven't seen ColourPop do a shade like this in a long time. Like this is absolutely stunning. Then we're taking Journey, that baby blue. We're gonna focus this on the lower lash line here. We're gonna start doing the little curves onto the under eye and cheek area. Honestly guys, I was a little scared of this look. I was like, this is not turning out how I was wanting it to. But once we put those shimmers on, I think it really came together and I really see that Aurora lights. Now we're gonna take it under here. We're gonna do a little scoop. Then we're going back into No Sleep, that lilac shade. And we are going to blend that into the blue. Then going into Midnight Sun, that burgundy, we are going to define it over here a little bit. We're going back into Journey, the baby blue, and we're going to put this over here to contrast. Then I'm going to go in with Head North. I'm going to focus it here to highlight and also under here. And then in this corner as well. Going into Arctic Fox, the green. I'm going to go into this shade Radio Waves because I don't think I've used this shade yet. This is a duochrome so it will reflect some blue. Oh yeah, I think that's perfect. Now it's time for our little nose highlight. I'll be going in with the last light stick. This is in the shade Sky Watcher. This one has like a green reflect, which is going to be perfect for this look because I just want some more green in this look because I just feel like it's very blue and purple heavy that we just need a bit of a contrast. And then for the lip oil, I'm going in with the shade Totally Magnetic. This one is essentially the clear gloss. And I just have Strawberry Moon on from Flower Nose. But alright guys, here we have the final Aurora Light makeup look completed. I absolutely love how this turned out. Definitely was trust the process type of look because in the beginning I was really doubting myself. But I just love how this look turned out. I love the colors and I think it really embodies the Aurora Strug palette really really well. So I'm really happy with this look and I hope you guys like it too. Alright guys, those were my three looks. What do you think? Let me know your favorite look down below. I seriously had so much fun playing with this palette and this collection. I loved how all three looks turned out. It's such a bummer that I didn't get to play with the greens though. So this is a palette I definitely like want to keep playing with and when it's a palette I want to keep playing with and creating more looks and it's inspiring, it is a good palette because I go through so many palettes, so many Colourpop palettes that when a palette does spark interest, I think it means something, okay? It means something. So yeah, absolutely love the palette. I would love to know what you guys think as well. Also, if you guys did enjoy today's video, if you found it helpful, if you could, give it a thumbs up for me. I would appreciate it so much. But thank you guys so much for watching as always. I love you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.